had one of those mornings where some folks watching this will be like, I don't understand. You're being weird. Other folks will be like, yeah, that's what happens. You will come to a time in your life when somehow in the middle of the night, you won't know how, um, you will injure yourself. You won't know what the F sleep wrong. Sleep wrong. I woke up and the left side of my back down near my legs was like, oh. no. But I've got, I've got, can we get up and go to the bathroom? No. But we, we've got to feed the cats. I got it. No. It, it was, it's, I don't know if it's from, I've been walking a lot every morning. I've been out and doing walking, trying to, or if it's just, you know, something went sprung and busted. I don't know what caused it, but. Yeah. You kids don't know this yet. Some of you, but, uh, there will come a point in your life when you can sleep wrong and be in pain. What does that even I, mean? Three years ago. I stepped off a curb wrong and I still have hip pain. What's that coming? I go. Now it turns out <sighs> the fun part about, well, the, the, the interesting part about having any kind of cancer is they do CT scans where they pretty much scan you head to hips. And the report is weirdly thorough. Like I'm 47 years old. And I found out because I had cancer, I found out I have scoliosis. Jesus. Because it came up on the CT scan. They're like, yeah, you have a slight twist in the very lower oh. part of your spine. And I'm like, is that why my hip always hurts? And they were like, yeah, probably. And I'm like, I had to get cancer to find out I had scoliosis American this whole time. What do you, it, it's, it's expensive until it isn't. Hi, Charlie. And you know who doesn't have to worry about that? Cats. Cats don't have to worry about that. They don't give a Nine. Shit. No. They ain't got to worry about nothing. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. <laughs> but yeah, that's another wonderful thing some of you whippersnappers have to look forward to is you will just injure yourself in stupid ways. What are you doing? What? Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure oh, it out. oh, gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Where are you going? Stuff to do, things to destroy. Gotta go get behind the monitor. <laughs> Each week, Catholic yeah, Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here from the segment we like to call What the Fuck's Wrong? With? And um, there's going to be a lot of bath this week. I do not understand in the fucking slightest what the point of this was. Do you remember that we actually can? Some people, I'm like barely on the edge. Some people watching this room will be like, what? When we were young, <clears throat> like shit like uh, Unsolved Mysteries was talking about the fucking Unabomber. Remember that? Still didn't know who the son of a bitch was back then. And yeah. it was like, you know, this whole thing, this manhunt trying to find him. He was very cryptic and he had, you know, this man. I think the newspapers actually like printed his manifesto to yeah. try and get him to stop right yeah well they were trying to they were trying to uh to i think they were trying to bring the fbi was trying to lure him out and all that i don't remember exactly i was like 10 i don't or fuck i don't know how fucking old i was robert stack was telling me shit he creeped me out and then all of a sudden yeah he, he was creepy dude and then he was ultra magnus in transformers the movie so that was just a weird situation anyway um the uh, d so back then it's just like okay this now fast forward to today and uh what what in the did that link work that i sent you yes good because what in what what that's not a verb <sighs> man convicted for threatening to unibomb FBI field office in LA. Los Angeles man has been found guilty of making violent criminal threats against law enforcement, including threatening to Unabom the FBI field office in Los Angeles. Now, the reason he was called the Unabomber was not 
it was because of a combination of, I think it was United Airlines and something else that he actually threatened. And the, the case itself was called Unabomb with no B. And then eventually just took off. They started calling him the Unabomber. It's not a verb. I don't think I knew that. It's yeah, it's 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 just it was just the, the name they put on the case file. That's it. But yeah, like also like he, I, as far as I recall, he didn't build a s super specific type of bomb. No. Like there wasn't like a trademark. No. Like to unibomb someone just means to mail them a bomb. Mark William Anton, 52, of the Sun Valley neighborhood of L.A., was found guilty Wednesday on two charges of threats by interstate communication. According to a release by the United States Department of Justice, Anton, who's been in custody since his arrest last December, was accused of contacting the FBI by email and making various violent threats, including boasting about his similarities to the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski and saying he was working on his own manifesto. <laughs> You know, uh, <laughs> you know what way, well, you know what you don't have in common with Ted Kaczynski? What? It took them a long time to catch that fucker because he was really smart. Oh, yeah. Like, he was actually literally a genius. Clearly, you were not. <laughs> like, I'm working on my own manifesto. But, motherfucker, you're just sending chat prompts through chat GPT is what you're fucking doing. Is what, that, that's how you're, you're making a man. I bet you anything. Just like the Unabomber, if... He suffered brain trauma. Anton's threats first began in July 2023 and continued for several months. On November 20th, two FBI officers interviewed him in front of his home, where he admitted to sending the threatening emails. It was warned to cease further communication. He got a warning telling him to stop. He didn't even get arrested yet. They're like, knock it off. He's like, okay. Despite this intervention, also Anton's behavior worsened. According to the DOJ. You did this over email. Email, yes. According to the DOJ. Like, who, who in the year of our Lord Beyonce, 2024, <laughs> does not fucking know that email can be traced? I don't care if you make a burner Gmail, because everybody has a burner Gmail. I have a burner Gmail for when I want to sign up for something, but I don't want to get the emails. <laughs> I just have a burner Gmail that I never check. So you give, you, you don't give have them, a burner I don't email? have a burner. I should probably do that. So you just give a bullshit email. It's a real address. It's just one I never check. Yeah. So if I want the coupon, but I don't want to get the emails, I just send them that one. You know, but it's still linked to my IP. Three days later, after the FBI showed up and told him to knock it off, on November 23rd, Anton emailed FBI agents and voiced his affinity for Kaczynski bragged he was voted most likely in his graduating class to be the next Unabomber. Yeah, they were, they were, they were insulting you, dipshit. That's not, yeah. Is that true? Like, is that, is that in your yearbook, bro? Because I wouldn't tell people that. And then sent a string of violent emails to the FBI, FBI agents on December 5th, threatening to, quote, Unabomb the FBI agent's field office in Westwood. The emails were signed by, quote, Supermax or death, officials said. Kaczynski spent the bulk of his time in prison sentence living in a supermax federal prison. According to the DOJ, he also sent screenshots of an online search for how to make a dirty bomb. The same day, Anton visited the FBI field office, which was confirmed by security footage. In another email, he promised to continue visiting the facility. Like he was, You know what else you don't have in oh. common with Ted Kaczynski? Hmm. He didn't have to Google how to make a dirty bomb. Yeah. Just the, the fucker was given every fucking opportunity. Supermax or death, they were out of cake. <laughs> you want to know what the best part about this entire article is? They put Ted Kaczynski's photo in here, but not his. Yeah. <laughs> That is the problem twerp. with like making these fuckers famous though. Twerp. Like I like that the media increasingly as they identify shooters will like say their name one time yeah. and then never again. Because so, some fucking psycho is going to idolize them. Like you're fucking LARPing is what you're fucking doing. Jesus not Christ. Well. Not well. Not well either. Like email. Email. But this, okay, Tara, 
this next one is going to make your head hurt like it make my, made my head hurt. You're going to read this article. I Please find some way to make this shit make sense because I read it three times. I don't understand what the fuck happened here. Florida woman called 911 on herself during attempted carjacking so she could, quote, do it legally. Now, you're already confused. I'm already confused. Just wait. Just wait. Tampa, Florida. Florida woman is arrested after you're calling. You're confused. I'm fucking confused, man. Florida woman was arrested after calling 911 on herself after trying to steal a car from a dealership so she could, quote, do it legally. Christy Terman, 37, called the Lee County Sheriff's Office because she wanted authorities to know, quote, because I'm trying to steal a car that's not legally mine, Terman said during the 911 call. So y'all better come make a report. I'm reporting this. Deputies arrived at the dealership a short time later. They found Terman exiting the driver's side of a stolen Toyota Corolla. The 37-year-old told deputies she was being trained in a game of black ops to steal a car, but called authorities to make her carjacking legal. I'm going to read that again. Okay? And if you, ha it, it, I would be careful listening to it because you might have a stroke. The 37 year old told deputies she was being trained in a game of black ops to steal a car, but called authorities to make her carjacking legal. What happened? What? Now, see, on the surface, you're going to get hung up on the make the carjacking legal part of that sentence. And you're not wrong. That is incredibly stupid. But then let it marinate for a minute. And you're going to realize that the real the real nugget of gold in the center of that little piece of chocolate is that she called the cops to report her black ops training. She created a legal record of her black ops training, which probably is lie, probably isn't even true, but still. I, I don't understand what happened. I don't understand the, like picture, the, 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 the line picture of thought. 007, picture 007 breaking some guy's neck and then calling Interpol just to just to tell them this is on the level. <laughs> I don't want to do anything illegal. <laughs> I just I don't understand what happened. What? And you didn't, I mean, the thing is, technically, you hadn't stolen it yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's still on the lot. I can you just imagine the nine one one operators just like, what, what? Could you repeat that? No, no, no. I just want to make sure it really is as stupid as it sounds. Please, one more time. You know, I've always thought I could never do that job because of the trauma and the horrible things you have to hear, right? I've never thought about the incredibly stupid things you have to hear. This this is... How does this person live but their life? But that's the thing, like, technically, she had not yet stolen it. She had broken in. How How does this person just, you know, live? How, how do they, this is like, if they go to the grocery store, I'm scared they're going to put a zucchini up their butt. I mean, that'd be the tamest thing someone on this show. That's true, yeah. Put up their butt. Yeah. But just, At least know, it's not alive. It's just like going, imagine going through your life every day and making this dumbest, weirdest choice. For no goddamn well, good so reason. Yeah. Like, you remember there used to be this, this whole thing about uh, we, one of the analysis of a crime is you have to ask who benefits. Well, that's a mm -hmm. lie because that shit Pre doesn't bono. work. That's right out the fucking window. Yeah. Who benefits? To quote the departed, qui bono, qui gives a shit. <laughs> <sighs> now, the next one is from L.A. Are you familiar with The Sphere? 
in Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. This weird, stupid, gigantic building they built with projections all over it that uh, it's it's going to go bankrupt in like a year. I promise you, because it no way it's making back. It's investment. one one cool thing they did was when the Marvels came out, they had like goose up on the sphere and then goose like spit up all the tentacles and it looked like they filled the sphere and got like stuck on the edges. And that did look pretty cool. <laughs> so. This seems to me like like a, an instance of something you could just predict was going to happen. You could just assume this was going to happen before you. St I think I know what this you, is. Yeah, just just this, it's sort of this is like Oreos and milk. You should have just known this was going to fucking happen. But apparently, they were goddamn astonished, ladies and gentlemen. And distinguished individuals, a man named Acid Farts has been banned from the sphere in Las Vegas after lighting up a bong during a fish show. I'll be honest, I'm surprised that fish even plays indoor venues for this very reason. <laughs> exactly. An Instagram user by the name of Acid Farts. That's okay has been banned from attending okay. his events at the Sphere in Las Vegas. The ban comes after Farts posted footage in which he sparked up bong during one of Fish's shows at the venue in April. The footage, originally posted on April 20th, traditional day, marched by <laughs> cannabis-themed celebrations, was accompanied by the message, quote, first bong hit to ever be ripped in the Las the Sphere Las Vegas, somebody called Guinness World Records, in which Farts tagged the venue that was maybe maybe a little oops he tells rolling stone farts was aware of the band as he was about to revisit the sphere to enjoy a show by dead and company last night june 6 but a ups delivery put a stop to his plans inside was a letter from the venue detailing both his misdemeanor and his punishment Bart's bong ban applies not only to the Sphere, but all venues managed by Madison Square Garden Entertainment, including Madison Square Garden itself, Radio City Music Hall, and the Beacon Theater in New York, and the Chicago Theater. This is going to be one of the least surprising sentences you'll hear in this entire story. Farts, who has seen Fish live 187 times, is considering appealing the ban. So he says he settled for getting the letter signed by the band. He also claims he may manufacture a free acid farts t-shirt. Proceeds from sales donated to the Divided Sky Foundation, a residential addiction recovery center in uh, Ludlow, Vermont. Founded last year by Fish Frontman Trey Anastasio. How... Here's the real question. Yeah. Okay. How did he get the bong into the venue? Well, you know, it... Well, there's a, there's the bomb. Like, where was security? Because every concert yeah. I have gone to for the last ten years, they're checking bags at the door. Yeah. So yeah. how did you get that giant fucking bong in the venue? Was it like you know, like like one of those uh the, those those spy like you ever seen them have those those guns they have to assemble from parts all over you know like like from the bottom of their shoe and there's part of the briefcase and all comes and it becomes a gun. Was it like that? Only it was a like bomb. 10 people brought in pieces. And yeah. They, they assembled. Yeah. Same place. Yes. I, I but that's just... been my question the whole time is how did you get the bong in? How, I would think, if you are hosting a fish show, this is what happens. I have friends that really are into fish and God bless them. I don't I, I don't understand the appeal of jam bands. I look forward to your comments. But, you know, live your best life. If that's what makes you happy. Great. Do you? Yeah. Th all the drugs are going to happen at the fish show. That's kind of their brand. Yeah. How can you be all like, no, you can't come here anymore? Like, you knew this was going to happen, dipshit. It's like trying to ban drugs at Burning Man. 
<sighs> Next one. This. I mean, at his age, at least he's keeping active, is what I should say about starting this next story. Um, everybody needs a hobby. I just, I don't really know how it, this developed this way. Man arrests 71. Arrested after LAPD finds nearly three thousand boxes of stolen lego sets at his home look at the fucking picture how did you fit I mean, in the house very, they're all very neatly arranged well yeah their inventory police in los angeles seized more than 2800 boxes of stolen lego sets from a 70 year old your one year old man's home wednesday Officers arrested 71-year-old Richard Siegel and his alleged accomplice, 39-year-old Blanca Guin, uh, Gudino? Gudino. Gudino, thank you. After raiding the elderly man's home in Long, uh, Long Beach, individual boxes have a retail value ranging from $20 to well over $1,000. Detectives start investigating the case after a retailer in San Pedro identifies Gudino as the suspect who allegedly robbed them several times last December. Several months later, witnesses, officers witnessed Godino stealing items from retailers in Torrance and Lakewood before dropping them off at Siegel's home. Like detectives believe Siegel would sell the stolen goods online since several potential buyers showed up at his home while officers raided it. Can you just imagine you're pulling up? There's a fucking SWAT truck. They've got the yellow tape out and you're like, hey, man, um, I just wanted to get an ad at for my 10 year old. It's it's yeah, just over you still there. Got that Rivendale set? Yeah, just here. It's I, I got the money. It's what was this like twenty bucks? Here you go. Can I can I just just grab it? Over? But also looking at the amount of these things, oh, I yeah. was assuming that he was stealing them from a distribution center, no. from a truck. That like he had a in with the trucking company. They're stealing these one or two at a time from fucking Target and shit. Yeah. Hell, maybe they're just loading everything into a fucking cart and running out the door. All right. Can we not walk on the they keyboard, say, my love? Thank you so much. They don't say, oh, <laughs> retro of the channel goes, Zach, Zach, he's a Lego kleptomaniac. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, how the. Okay. Thank you. Just good boy. Look, how was he living in that house? It's like ceiling to floor Lego. Look at that shit. Yeah. It's like the fucking back room of a toy store. He has furniture built out of Lego that's not built out of Lego. <laughs> Fuck, man. Oh. <laughs> There's one guy listening to this who's stoned out of his fucking mind. He's just going, whoa. Have a good night, acid farts. <laughs> Just, I, motherfucker. The goddamn audacity. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit. It's bad enough that, like, when we were children, Legos were for children. Yeah, yeah. Adults didn't fuck with Lego when we were children. <laughs> no, they and really didn't. I don't mind. I'm not going to come out against collector Legos like, or whatever. Like they, they didn't have, they had like, there were grown up Legos that were like, you, you made stuff out of them. They were like, like, yeah, mechanical kind of things, but they weren't any fun. They didn't have any fun colors or little, little men with them. It was just like, you can make you a build and Avengers tower out of Lego right. when we were kids. Right. Like Legos were red, yellow, blue, and green. Yeah. And, and they were bricks. Yeah. yeah was... And use your fucking brain, kid. Legos have come a long way. Yeah. Licensing and I don't mind that. Do that. I don't mind adults being into Lego, but it has driven the price up that like now I go to Target and I look for Lego for like kids or like whenever I'm doing like a donating toy at Christmas, I figure Lego is a good non gender specific gift. Yeah. And it's hard to find Lego that is actually affordable anymore. Well, I mean, I I could give a fuck about like Target or Walmart or whatever. They're they're fucking insured. Fuck them. 
But the people who have to suffer for this shit are the people who actually fucking work in the fucking store. They are getting the blowback yeah. for this shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck you for putting them through this shit. Simba, I know. I see you looking at the ring light. Like, yeah, you, here we go. You know what you need to do. It's like, do you know how easy it is to scam uh, Amazon out of shit? They will let you return anything. Anything. What you need to do is just buy the Legos and send the box back with like a pound of rocks in there or something. I see. Hello, Simba. I saw, I saw yeah, ears. I don't know if you can see him. I saw ears. Oh. Now he's rubbing on the mic. He really, he's fascinated by the, I have a little clip on ring light. Uh, and he really wants to murder the ring light. It Thank know, you, It knows buddy. what it you, did. You, you showed that ring light who's boss. Good job. Oh, all right. He was um, climbing the monitor. We've got another one where, again, the, the whole who benefits thing, right out the fucking window. Right up. It's, it's, there's like, fuck it. If we had Hercule Poir Poirot running around these days, he would have had a stroke by now from this shit. Yeah. Florida man arrested for smacking officer with Stanley Cup after breaking into church. Now, is it the tumbler or the hockey trophy? The tumbler. Okay. Because if it's hockey trophy, I would have a lot more questions. I mean, that would be <sighs> funnier. Florida man was arrested after records indicate he swung a Stanley Cup at an, at an office at an officer after breaking into a church with a sledgehammer and caused over ten thousand dollars in damages. On Saturday at around five seventeen p.m., police responded to a call about a man who had broken into the Mission Church in Palm Bay. According to an affidavit, uh, officers responded by Timothy Borman, 24, holding a metal Stanley Cup in his hand, yelling and cussing at members of the church. Which, you know, that's not really the, the, the best way to take out your, uh, your... Was he yelling that he had chosen poorly? <laughs> this is not the cup of a fucking carpenter! As a reporting officer approached Boardman, he said, quote, I'm going to fuck you up, which is always a good thing to start off when you're talking with an officer. State your intentions yeah, clearly. They love that. Make, make it, yeah. just, just be honest with them. As he, he yeah. then started to walk away, at which point the officer pulled out his taser and told Boardman to get on the ground and stop walking away, according to the affidavit. Boardman then took a seat before bouncing back up and walking aggressively toward a second officer, trying to strike him in the head with his Stanley Cup. The officer was able to dodge the cup, but still hit him in the shoulder. Boardman then tried to run away. The first officer tased and incapacitated him. Uh, excuse me. Police had placed him in handcuffs. Members of the church told police that Boardman had broken into a shed at the back of the church property where he grabbed a sledgehammer and then broke into the church, which is probably very alarming if you're inside the church. And there's like... Well, was there a service going on? I I don't know. There's people in the church. It was, a, it was a Wednesday. Well, he, that's my question is, if there were people in the church, why did he have to break in? I don't know. Did he did, now, did he break down a door or did he Kool-Aid man that generally, shit? Generally, I mean, I've been to, I haven't been to every denomination of service for sure, but as far as I know, most sects of Christianity don't lock you in. Uh, yeah, he then started to damage, so like, yeah, he then started to damage everything in sight. As of now, authorities estimate he caused over $10,000 worth of damage inside the church and church property. While speaking with officers, Borman said he remembered breaking into the church and causing all the damage inside. He said it because he did it because quote, the church stole everything from him. Well, not your Stanley cup, apparently. Yeah. You know, what 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 are you Job or some shit? It'd be like God has forsaken me and all I have left is my Stanley Cup. Is that how it worked? I mean, the mugshot is biblical. <laughs> that's that's a hairstyle, I'll tell you what. Uh, 
That that is that is a look who says, I don't know where the fuck I am. Yeah. The the article doesn't say that there were substances involved, but we've been at this a while. So our last one this week. Like what was what was in that Stanley Cup? <laughs> Special juice. Um all right, this last one this week. Everybody get ready to get pissed, and rightly so. Fuck these motherfuckers. Ain't no, what the fuck? Your mama did something wrong. You need to go apologize to her if you pull this shit. You are, you, there is no place for you on this earth. Fuckers. Like a prank. Not really. Burlington, Vermont police terrify high school students with fake shooting. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Buckle up. When about 20 Burlington high school students visited the Queen City's Police Department headquarters Wednesday for a forensics class, officers staged a mock shooting, complete with a mask assailant and realistic gunshots. The demonstration came without apparent warning to the students themselves who dove for the ground in terror. One student who has to be anonymous because the cops did this mm. said she crawled underneath a desk and began looking for her phone to text her mother when two screaming women and a man in a ski mask burst into the room and gunshots rang out. The student said she realized what was happening wasn't real when officers in the room didn't leap into action. I mean, that's not a good indicator, really. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. The Google, Google Uvalde. Yeah. The incident nevertheless reminded her of a time she'd had a firearm pointed at her and left her crying and, quote, shaken up and shocked. What's most upsetting, the student said, was the events took place with, quote, no heads up. It was laughed about afterwards, she said. I was made to, it was made to feel like a prank, basically not much of a demonstration. Reports the incident spread quickly on social media with both Burlington police and school district is quickly issuing statements Thursday, apologizing. Well, we take responsibility to keep our students safe very seriously. We're deeply sorry this event occurred, Russ Alex said. Um, well, being sorry something occurred is nice and all, but that's not being responsible for it. So that's great passive language. Yeah. We're sorry this We're happened. We're sorry that this thing spontaneously happened that nobody did. That this weird homunculi sprung up out of the earth with a gun. In their own statement, Burlington police said the department apologized, quote, to any student in attendance who were upset by the specific scenario and crime scene portion of the presentation. What what exactly would, were you trying to teach them with that presentation? What to, to, that what to piss themselves? Was that was the lesson? If there's one thing American students know real fucking well by this point, it's how to deal with a mass shooting because it's your life. But police also appeared to pin the blame on school officials for the shock the students felt on May 23rd. According to police, department staff communicated details of the demonstration to school officials, including that the training event would include fake firearms and a mock shooting. Quote, do you think this sort of incident would be OK for your group of students? It is about as real life as you can get and certainly exactly the sort of thing we deal with most frequently. Police said they told school officials. Now, that's not true. Uh, that's one of the least frequent things that police actually encounter. It's not an everyday occurrence. It all I mean, depends on where you live. But. It, it kind of is, but not like an everyday occurrence in the same place all the time. It's kind of like lightning. Like Burlington, Vermont. Really? Um, according I mean, I, I lived five miles from Sandy Hook, Connecticut. And, for, you know, same to, kind of place. According to police, school staff responded, I think these students will be fine with this simulation. We will give a heads up to parents and students. Well, that didn't happen. Fine with? Letter sent home to this families. This isn't like, 
hey, we'd like to bring the kids cupcakes. Does anyone have a gluten intolerance? <laughs> Anybody got a nut no. allergy? Yeah. Nobody has any dietary restrictions. I think they'll be fine with it. Not we're going to we're going to tap into literally probably the deepest fear of every teenager in the country. Yeah, I think they'll be all right. The purpose they wrote, quote, was to make a point about how witness statements can be unreliable and detectives wanted the event to be as realistic as possible. Such real reenactments be used during training with, quote, older adults and college level students, they added. But detectives apologized after they realized the, re the reenactment did not translate well to high school students. OK, number one, I took forensics when I was in high school. And we did actually a, a, an assignment to prove that witness could be unreliable. And the way we did it was we did a confusing scene of things going by. And then you ask the audience, OK, what did you see? We didn't pull out guns. Dan used to talk about a study where, like, you were asked to count how many times a light flashed in a video and a gorilla goes by in the background. And a lot of people won't notice the gorilla because they're counting the flashing lights. Right. Like, also, there's ways to talk about how eyewitness statements and memory aren't reliable without traumatizing everybody. Also, they didn't give the gorilla a gun. Yeah. <sighs> Police officials, oh my God, said they would meet with school staff and students Friday to, quote, discuss the presentation and its impact. We hope this can be a reflective growth opportunity for all parties. You mean the police that were laughing about it after they, they chased fucking students under a goddamn table? I hope one? the lawsuits pay for all those kids to go to college and fire your asses. I mean, it's... They're police. They're not getting fired. Let's be honest. This is America. Yeah. And the money is going to come out of the city fund, not, not from the police. It's no consequences whatsoever because we're we, it's it's horrible here. But hey, Alex Jones is having to sell his ranch. I know, right? He cried on YouTube. No. He's having to sell the whole thing. Infowars is being liquidated. He's having to sell everything. I guess the gay frogs. I don't like wishing harm on people. I really go out of my way to not wish harm on people, even terrible fucking people, right? Yeah. I really try. But that doesn't mean that I think you should get to be insanely wealthy if you're a shitbag. Well, so, mean, like, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Go I, get a job at Walmart. I guess the gay frogs finally won, Tara. If they finally got to him. At last. Happy Pride. Happy Pride, everybody. So the, the first thing we learned this week is fuck the police. Pretty much. That's just what the fuck? <sighs> the implications of everything involved in this story. There's nothing good. Not nothing. Fucking. N nobody. No, nobody at any point was like, this is a terrible fucking idea. You wouldn't necessarily expect that from the cops, but maybe like. The well, school administrators? Yeah, because you know what? Y'all can be fired. I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but you will find consequences. It will suck. Um, We've learned that if you tell the police you're going to fuck them up, it, it, it's, it's polite. It's, it's proper etiquette, etiquette for dealing with police when you're, you're going to hit them with a stamp. Yeah, that's good going. Thank you. That's the, the proper. Honestly. I'm surprised that we got a story about someone hitting a cop with a Stanley cup and it wasn't like a 19 year old girl. Really? Yeah. Cause that's, yeah. um, we've learned that, uh, even you can get to be in your seventies and still, still do the pettiest of fucking crimes. God bless you. I hope I'm that spry at that age, you know, except, you know, not going to jail. Um, We've learned that if you're going to host a fish concert, people going to get high. Just accept it. That's the trade-off. They will buy lots of shit. They will fill the fucking place up, but they going to get ripped. So yeah, determine how much your capitalism can adjust to but this. But from everything I've heard, they're like a pretty chill crowd. Of so like course they're not going to have like, property damage. And <laughs> 
Right. You're not going to have riots, but you're going to want to ventilate the place the day bit, after. A little bit. Um, <laughs> we've learned if you are going to break the law, just calling the cops and saying you're going to break the law is not going to make breaking the law okay. I don't understand what happened in the story. It still hurts my head. Where does and the black ops... And also that's not what black ops is. What, what is the training in a game of black ops? Why is that okay to steal the car? Why tell the cops? What is a game of black ops? What the fuck happened here? God damn it. You know the experiment, if you put a bunch of monkeys at typewriters, eventually they'll write Shakespeare. We're about halfway there. Maybe and just, that's where we got that story. They're going through the comedies first, I guess. Um, and finally, if you threaten the fucking FBI for months and they show up at your house and say, knock that shit off, and then you just do it harder, you deserve the jail. Dip shit. Yeah. Like you got away with some shit there. Like take they the just win. showed up and we're like, hey now. Right. Take yeah. take the fucking win. You had a W there, man. Shit, you could have wrote a book after that. You could have gone on fucking the fucking well, you could have gone on InfoWars, but now it's being sold, so you can't go on InfoWars. But you just you still, 